Hi everyone. I'm on a lunch break and back from vacation. So I realized I haven't done a reading catch up about the books that I've read in the last couple weeks and I'm um, forgetting some details about some of the, some of those books. So I thought, um, I would uh, get on here and share my thoughts about some of these books before I forget. Uh, this is why um, you seasoned booktubers do weekly reading catch-ups sometimes because then things have um, had enough time to germinate, settle, and then uh, for reflection, but then it's not long enough where you're forgetting details. All right, so I'm going to try to walk through these as quickly as I can um, to, to um, not take too long. Um, I don't think that I talked about The Seven Husbands of, of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I don't think I did. I might have said I was reading it, but anyway, I finished it and it's it's a great summer read. If you haven't tried a Taylor Jenkins Reid book, um, please do just dive in, check it out. I didn't think that I would like necessarily the Carrie Soto books, but um, and, and, and I don't know that I would or not, but I picked up The Seven Husbands on a lark at the library and it was really good. It was um, well done. Um, I'm not gonna go in here too much about what, what it's about because you can just read part of the blurb or the millions of reviews that have been done about the book and, and, and see. But it's about Evelyn Hugo, this Hollywood, this older Hollywood star finally telling her story, which covers her entire career but goes through the men she married and why and that was actually uh, really interesting i didn't think it would be i thought it would be drawn out and too wordy but really the chapters being broken down into her marriages it, it worked out really well so um, and then there's a twist at the end which i didn't see coming i don't know if anyone could see coming that was interesting that tied some things together so yeah, that was, uh, that was entertaining. Um, I don't have this book anymore, but Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I wanted to read that before I read um, the, the Late Americans. So I got done with Real Life. I may have talked about it as I was reading it here, but I, I really enjoyed Real Life. I tried it when it came out and I just wasn't, wasn't the right book at the right time for me, but I really enjoyed it this time. It's about Wallace who is a biochem PhD student in a Midwestern university. And it's about, he's a, a black queer um, main character. And um, so he's in this Midwestern university where there aren't um, a, a lot of black students. There aren't um, many queer students, um, question mark. I don't think there are, um, but there are in his friend group. Um, and then he has, um, straight friends as well but it, this is um, a story about his workplace uh, challenges his friendship circle um, and his background his, his he's, he grew up in Alabama and reveals something of his background to one of the characters at some point so it's done in third person, but then there's a little chapter where he's talking about his background, which goes to first person, which I really liked. I had a lot of empathy for Wallace, um, and I, I just thought the, the writing was superb. I was in it. I cared a lot about Wallace because of the way he was written. I also just wanted to like, oh, just choke some of the people he worked with for being so awful. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really good. Then I went on to the late Americans. And so this is a book about, um, grad students and they are in the, an Iowa city program, um, different programs. Um, one is a poet that's Seamus. That's how the story opens up. 
in the first chapter and then there are several dancers and then there's there might be a guy who was a musician and he's a dancer I, I don't remember the point being I got confused I loved the opening chapter with Seamus I think a lot of people talk about that there's a it's just a you know smack in your face kind of chapter and then Seamus doesn't come up again for a few chapters but when he did come up again in another chapter like by the eighth chapter or something I was glad to see him again I wanted to know more about him the first chapter is just such an in-your-face um, scene around like a poetry circle where they're sharing their <laughs> poetry oh it's unrelenting um, but I did get confused I got some of the characters confused they have interesting names um, Seamus Ivan Fyodor with an F Fyodor like a Russian I think um, version of that name um, there's a, 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 a young woman named F Fatima or Fatima Fatima and she's um, a dancer I really liked that character I didn't see enough of her I just liked her um, character and, and wanted her to be more throughout the story so I could learn more about her I love Brandon Taylor's writing it's more complex in this book um, the way that he, so so this book is I felt more dialogue heavy and there are scenes that are the chapters so they're like vignettes of a character um, in a scene and that could be um, in a um, in a macro level or in a micro level with uh, within a relationship so there's a lot of friendship scenes and then there are scenes where one of these characters is in a relationship and most of the relationships have problems have and some are serious problems and so there's conflict within relationships whether it's friends or lovers and it seems to be that the characters in one way or another are struggling with their own lives their own futures um, dancing is a highly competitive um, profession and so for the dancers you know they're going to have to probably move to New York City and where are they going to get the money how are they going to do this um, so it was it was interesting I think my experience looking back on the book is more favorable than it was when I was reading it so I, I didn't feel that compelled to keep picking it up but now that I've read it I have a better feeling about the book so there you go um, that's that I have a list here so I don't oh yeah so the guest I don't have these books anymore I just returned them from um, to the library the guest by Emma Klein I picked this up as a summer read I have not read the other Emma Klein book and this is about a young woman named Alex who's hanging out with an older man who she's met in New York City this is the summer and she's agreed to go to Long Island he's wealthy he has this beautiful house and a housekeeper in Long Island and she's going to parties and just hanging out it seems to this older man's friends that this is normal for him to be hanging out with this young woman or you know maybe several young women and she does something or maybe a series of things that irritates this guy enough that he asks her to leave and so she's now out on her own and she doesn't want to go back to New York City she doesn't really have anything there she's got a some boyfriend or something or an ex anyway that she's really wants to stay away from there and she has this feeling that by the time the Labor Day party comes that this older guy whose name I'm forgetting is going to have that everything's going to be cooled off all she has to do is bide her time for a week and so she knows enough about the beach and the beachfront and where all these houses are that she just knows she has to fold in and and um, you know crash a, another gathering and pretend like she knows people uh, and that's what she starts doing the interesting part about this book is I felt was the or that I connected with was the just abject 
loneliness and feeling of being a complete outsider and just almost invisible. Um, now, she sets herself up for this, right? I mean, she's in this like rarefied community of very wealthy people. So I'm not saying that I'm feeling sorry for Alex, but I did, I did um, en not enjoy, I connected with or I appreciated the way that Emma Klein wrote this this sense of loneliness and stark, um, not despair maybe, but just um, the, the feeling of being an outsider. So I enjoyed that exploration. I did not, I, I mean, I could see the train wreck coming and I think that that's the tension in the book that you know that probably this thing where the guy kicked her out is not gonna be resolved, that there was no, thing in his mind that she should come back and how's that going to end so i i enjoyed it i would pick up another book by her as a um as another summer read or a palette cleanser then i read a um an advanced reader copy of caleb uh, caleb azuma nelson's new book small worlds which has come out since then i think in may um, so when i was reading it um, I think it had already come out, or at least in the UK. I have not read Open Water. I did order it from the library, <clears throat> and it came in while I was away, so um, I have to get it out again from, from the library because it, uh, it was held too long. But I would like to compare his first book to now the second book because I don't have any sense of, of him as a writer. Um, I'm saying that because I felt like this book, Small Worlds, which is about Stephen in London. He's a Ghanaian um, young black man who's about to, to graduate high school and he's looking um, forward to college. He'd really like to major in music, although his family, um, being an, an immigrate, immigrated, immigrated family, from Ghana um, is interested in him having a profession and they don't feel like music is um, a serious enough profession. So he applies for college. He doesn't get into the music program, but he gets into a business program and he goes off to college. So this story is um, takes place over three summers. He's got a best friend, um, uh, a female named Dell, and she's a musician too. Uh, you get to learn um, about the neighborhood that Stephen is brought up in, which is um, a neighborhood made up of, of um, um, Ghanaian families, and there's a, um, um, a, a restaurant or um, convenience store. Um, I can't remember which, but I'm thinking it's a convenience store and everybody knows everybody everyone's very close they have very high hopes for Stephen. Um, when he goes away to college for business uh, again what i really enjoyed about uh, this writing is how um, the author brings out the sense of actual despair that he has because he's so lonely and um, I feel like I felt like maybe he would have been making more connections if he was in the music program, but he just didn't have any interest in business and he tried. Um, but he got so lonely being away and not being in the program that he was in uh, or that he wanted to be in um, that he actually leaves and comes back and um, and gets a job. So that was that was um, heart rendering and you didn't know what was gonna happen with Steven and I'm not going to um, tell you any more about the, the plot, but it does have a poetic language. And what I'm interested in knowing and learning is if his first book did too. They would, so the, the, um, the author would repeat certain phrases that had to do with dance because Steven and his friends loved to dance and be in, clubs and at parties where they could dance and um, so there were a couple phrases having to do with dance that kept being repeated and I, I just wondered if that was a, um, a style of writing um, that um, that the author tends to use 
Um, it was it, it was interesting. It was engaging. I would I'm certainly interested in reading Open Water, and um, and seeing what else um, Caleb Azuma Nelson does. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm very interested in reading Open Water because I have completely forgotten what that's about um, because it came out a couple years ago or three years ago. Um, so let me know if um, you've read Small Worlds now and if you've read Open Water, what you're thinking. And then I have written down um, Diary of a Void and I have that here. I just finished it. It's a little novella. I saw it somewhere, so I picked it up. Um, because I saw somebody um, talking about it on, on BookTube and then I saw it at the library. This is um, Emmy Yagi's first novel. She writes for a magazine or she's an editor of a magazine. So this is translated from the Japanese. So this was quirky. This is about a young woman in her 30s who um, is being treated like a, like a, um, an old-fashioned secretary at her office in Tokyo where they're asking her to clean up after meetings, cleaning up the coffee cups and so on. They're asking her to make coffee um, for uh, meetings and she just gets fed up with it and says one day that she can't do the coffee anymore because she's pregnant and the, co the smell of coffee makes her <laughs> sick. <laughs> and you're le so there's an automatic tension because like, what is she going to do now? Um, and so the chapters are broken down by number of weeks, like in a pregnancy. And with each week, you're wondering, what the heck is she going to do? She does go home and visit her parents. And she doesn't bring any of this up. But, but she almost mentally decides she is pregnant. She just embodies the life of a pregnant woman at work. Um, and so what happens? Does she, I mean, what happens after she becomes, you know, 30 weeks or 24 weeks or, and so on? Well, you'd have to read it to find out, but it is quirky. Um, I don't know whether I'll ever read another book by Emmy Yagi. I, I suppose I would if I saw one, but um, it was a nice, um, it was a nice palate cleanser. So what am I reading now? I'm going to start moving a little faster because I've already been talking for 17 minutes. Um, I mentioned in, a, in another video that um, when I was on vacation, I picked up two Anita Bruckners and this one, A Private View. I'm loving it. I'm um, three quarters of the way through. It's the first Bruckner I've read where the, um, the main character is a man and his name is Bland. Is, can that be his name? George Bland? Yeah. An aging bachelor whose existence has been virtually a mirror image of his name up until now. Up until now. So he lives in an apartment building. S plot ensues when this young woman um, is staying in his building. That's all I'll say. I mean, it's not that Bruckner is plot heavy, so, you know, it's it's no big deal for me to talk a little bit more about it. But I would say that if you've read Anita Bruckner and you're looking for one that's got a little bit of like, how is this all going to turn out sense to it? Pick up a private view because that's how I'm feeling now. I'm, I'm starting to read it faster because I need to know what is going to happen. That's, that's all I'll say about it, but really fun. Just so much fun. Um, in my library video, I mentioned that I picked up just on a whim Franz Francisco, and I'm eager to get to this because this is reprinted from a 1970s book. So this was originally written in 1970s. And I, I always love that to discover a book that was, hasn't been reprinted until now. And, um, this is about a young black woman who has a love affair with an indie filmmaker named Francisco. A portrait of the artist as a young black woman trying to find a way back to herself. It's an on the road diary of a young actress and musician who has become disillusioned with Hollywood. So 
I'm eager to get to that one. I've already started Mild Vertigo, and I wondered in that library haul video where I'd heard of Mild Vertigo, so I just looked around and discovered that the New York, the New York Times did a review of this book in May. Um, so if you Google it, you'll find that article. Um, Miko Kanai is how I'm pronouncing it. And this is actually a reprint uh, so this is translated from um, Japanese and um, it's done by New Directions Books. And this is a reprint of a book that was first published in, I think, in the 90s, in like 1997. Um, I think that's how I'm remembering it from that article. So um, I'm enjoying it so far. It's one of those mundane slice of extremely ordinary life books and I it's interesting how the main character the wife so she's a housewife when she talks to her husband it's as if she's talking to you because there's no quote marks so it's like she's writing in a diary or addressing you um, and it took me a while to pick that up um, but I'll see if I can find yeah so like in this paragraph so that you know just solid writing and then one of the paragraphs starts out listen let's say hypothetically that was true of the female architect in your office but even so said Natsumi putting great stress on the even so how can you say the same is true of Mrs. Asakuri's story honestly whenever you talk about romance and stuff you're always so heavy-handed at which Sechan laughing through her nose said which is exactly why I'm still single um, so here she's not talking to her husband she's talking to someone else but you don't know when you're launching into dialogue. And that's pretty cool. I feel like it's very um, intimate in that way. You're very close to these people and uh, when they're speaking. So I, I, I really enjoyed that. And then I will end by saying I am now getting back to Pineapple Street, which I had just begun before I went away, but I do want to continue and see if I want to keep on going. I'm only on page 13 and I really liked it. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about it here because it's all over the place, but um, we'll see if I keep on going. So that's it. That's a reading catch up. I am about to get a bunch of books um, this coming weekend from the library. So I'll have more to talk about and more to dive into then, but I hope you're having a good week. Thank you so much for tuning in again. And please let me know if you've read any of these books. Um, share your thoughts without any spoilers, of course, for anyone. And um, I'll see you on the next one.